Date Line Deception – What it is and why it matters to you A close examination of the international date line irrefutably proves that the modern weekly cycle has not cycled continuously without interruption since creation. To suggest otherwise is to bow to tradition and assumption to the exclusion of the evidence. What is the international date line? The international date line, or the IDL, is an imaginary line that runs through the middle of the Pacific Ocean. It was officially established in 1884 at the International Meridian Conference in Washington, D.C. for the sole purpose of differentiating between days on the Gregorian calendar. The international date line functions as a line of demarcation separating two consecutive calendar dates. When you cross the date line, you become a time traveler of sorts, cross to the west and it's one day later, cross back and you've gone back in time. For the most part, the date line follows the 180 degree meridian, which is opposite the Greenwich meridian or prime meridian in London, England. The date line is far from being straight though, as there are several contrived deviations to accommodate the political and economic affiliations of nearby islands and countries. The location selected for the international date line is completely arbitrary. Its location is a matter of convenience and has no ties whatsoever to anything in nature. 180 degrees was chosen because it runs mostly through open ocean in the central Pacific, zigging and zagging to keep nearby nations on their own day and date. So the choice of 180 degrees was arbitrary, but it established the IDL in use today. The international date line could have been anywhere, but it is most convenient to be 180 degrees away from the defining meridian that goes through Greenwich, England. It also is fortunate that this area is covered mainly by empty ocean. However, there have always been zigs and zags in it to allow for local circumstances. International Date Line Summary It is imaginary. It was contrived by a committee of men in Washington, D.C. in 1884. The location of the IDL is arbitrary and has no link to anything in nature. Because the IDL is arbitrary, it is movable. It has been moved several times for political and or economic convenience. We'll touch more on this later. What is the lunisolar date line? The lunisolar date line is the line of demarcation established on Earth by the light of dawn the second after the sun and moon are in conjunction. This phenomenon takes place at the beginning of each lunar cycle and is very predictable. Unlike the man-made date line, the lunisolar date line is not arbitrary. Rather, it is based upon the motions of the heavenly bodies, just as Yahweh intended. And Elohim said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, or worship times, and for days and years. Genesis 1.14 Notice that Genesis does not say, And Elohim said, Let a committee of men about 6,000 years from now create an imaginary line at their discretion to divide the day from the night, and let it be for signs and for seasons, or worship times, and for days and years. What makes the lunisolar date line so remarkable is that it allows us to differentiate between calendar days without man's inventions, namely the international date line. When reckoning New Moon Day as commencing at dawn after the lunisolar conjunction, the entire world is united in the observation of not only the feasts and Sabbaths, but every day. That is to say that everyone on Earth begins their day within the same 24-hour period. Let's explore the inner workings of the lunisolar date line. The first dawn after the lunisolar conjunction marks the beginning of the date line. Dawn then moves forward from that point, bringing with it new moon day to the world. Subsequently, six workdays follow, and then the seventh day Sabbath or lunar Sabbath. Although Yahweh's date line, which could also be called his dawn line, changes geographically from one lunation to the next, commencing new moon day at dawn after the conjunction ensures that everyone on Earth begins their day within the same 24-hour period. Consequently, there is no need whatsoever for man's counterfeit date line. Had the father's feast days never been forgotten and his calendar never forsaken, there would have been no reason to conjure up the man-made IDL. How does the international date line compare with the lunisolar date line? 
So let's compare the IDL with the Looney Solar Dateline with a quick question and answer session, shall we? OK. Is the International Dateline based on observational phenomena? No, the IDL is 100% imaginary and arbitrary. Is the Looney Solar Dateline based on observable phenomena? Yes. It is based on the motions of the heavenly bodies in accordance with Genesis 1.14. If you were in the right place at the right time and the sun and moon were perfectly aligned, there would be a solar eclipse every new moon. Can the International Dateline be moved by man? Yes. Men have moved the IDL several times for political and or economic convenience. Can the Looney Solar Dateline be moved by man? No. Because the Looney Solar Dateline is determined by the heavenly bodies, it's out of man's reach. The Looney Solar Dateline is under the direct supervision of Father Yahuwah, who by wisdom founded the earth and by understanding established the heavens. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 19. Who created the International Dateline? The IDL was contrived by a committee of men in Washington, D.C. Who created the Looney Solar Dateline? The Looney Solar Dateline was established by Yahweh. It is determined at the beginning of each lunation by the motions of the heavenly bodies, in accordance with Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. When was the International Dateline established? The IDL was established in 1884. When was the Looney Solar Dateline established? The Looney Solar Dateline was established at creation with the ordination of the sun and moon. Which dateline do you suppose heaven endorses? Let's look at six ways the IDL cannot be heaven's dateline. 1. Waking up. Many today are waking up to the half-truths and outright lies being promulgated within the institutionalized church and are returning to covenant Torah. They are being enlightened to the perpetual nature of Yahweh's feast days and are zealously promoting a return to set-apart living and observance of all that Yahweh has commanded. Often overlooked, though, is the calendar being used to calculate the feast days is irreparably pagan. Not only that, but it is inexorably dependent upon the international dateline. This is a huge problem for those who profess to adhere to Scripture alone. To zealously proclaim sola scriptura, while making Yahweh's feast days subservient to the man-made international dateline, is utterly inconsistent. Pause for a minute and think about this, will you? How can the Sabbaths and the annual feasts be dependent upon a 130-year-old man-made invention? 2. SDAs and the international dateline. Cognitive dissonance at its best. The Seventh-day Adventist Church has been blessed with a wealth of scriptural truth. One area in particular is their recognition of the tremendous importance of keeping the Sabbath day holy. Sadly though, SDAs have adamantly rejected the fullness of the three angels' messages and the increasing light of biblical calendation. Consequently, they continue to blindly cling to the lopsided theology of exalting the Papal Gregorian Saturday, as determined by the man-made IDL, while professing scripture as the sole rule of faith and duty. Seventh-day Adventists ardently claim that Saturday is the biblical Sabbath, the seal of Yah, and that Sunday is the pagan day of worship, the mark of the beast. Yet they ignore the fact that it is the man-made date line alone that separates the two days. They recognize the importance of keeping the Sabbath and the grave error of exalting the pagan sun day. Yet, they have no problem allowing man to determine when the seventh day ends and the following day begins via the international dateline. This makes no sense. The only difference between the seal of Yah and the mark of the beast in SDA theology is the man-made dateline. If you are an SDA, we humbly implore you to stop and think about this for a moment. If the final conflict is to be as simple as Saturday versus Sunday, how can it be that the only difference between these two days is an imaginary line cooked up by a committee of men in Washington, D.C.? And if Saturday is the ancient Sabbath of Scripture, why is it governed exclusively by an 1884 invention? These are serious questions that every truth-seeker must address. 
3. On the move The necessity of a calendar dateline was popularized by 13th century geographers who marveled how a circumnavigator would paradoxically gain or lose a date depending on his travel direction. Various popes and empires subsequently declared calendar datelines in accordance with their needs. The international dateline has been relocated for convenience several times since its inception. Not only that, but even the unofficial makeshift line that preceded the IDL was moved on at least two occasions. The Philippines In 1844, the Philippines, along with the Mariana Islands, Guam and the Caroline Islands, removed Tuesday, December the 31st from its calendar, shifting the make-believe date line to the east. Consequently, what had previously been recognized as Friday became Saturday, and what had previously been recognized as Saturday became Sunday. SDAs in the Philippines disregard this conundrum entirely, though, by worshipping on the new Saturday and boasting, Our Sabbath is the New Testament Sabbath. By default, SDA theology demands that those who exalt what had previously been Saturday, the new Sunday, are in danger of receiving the Mark of the Beast. This is both illogical and inconsistent. How can an honest truth seeker continue to cling to the erroneous doctrine of a continuous weekly cycle in the face of such clear evidence to the contrary? Alaska When the United States purchased Alaska from Russia in 1867, the makeshift line was moved to the west. Consequently, Alaska observed two Fridays in a row. At the instigation of US Secretary of State William Seward, the United States Senate approved the purchase of Alaska from Russia for $7,200,000 on April 9, 1867, and the United States flag was raised on October 18 of that same year, now called Alaska Day. Coincident with the ownership change, the de facto international dateline was moved westward, and Alaska changed from the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar. Therefore, for residents, Friday, October the 6th, 1867, was followed by Friday, October the 18th, 1867. Two Fridays in a row because of the dateline shift. This means that what had previously been recognized as Saturday became Friday, and what had previously been recognized as Sunday became Saturday. Think about it. Saturday Sabbatarians in Alaska today worship on what was Sunday only 150 years ago. Again, the ramifications for the SDA Church are huge because their theology insists that those who persist in Sunday observance will ultimately bear the mark of the beast. How can this be when only 150 years ago their day of worship, Saturday, was Sunday? Integrity demands that Yahweh's faithful acknowledge the egregious fallacy of making heaven's holy days subordinate to a man-made date line. Samoan Islands and Tokelau In 1892, the IDL was moved to the west of the Samoan Islands. This was achieved by observing Monday, July the 4th for two consecutive days in the islands. 119 years later, in 2011, Samoa shifted the IDL back to the east by removing Friday, December the 30th from its calendar. Tokelau, a nearby island belonging to New Zealand, made the transition as well. Today, the IDL passes between the islands of Samoa and American Samoa. The majority of SDAs in Samoa now worship on the new Sunday because, they say, the continuous weekly cycle is what matters. Yet, they ignore the fact that the 2011 adjustment was only returning Samoa to the calendar week it was observing prior to 1892. This is utterly nonsensical and again makes clear the fallacy of claiming that the modern week has cycled continuously and without interruption since creation. Kwajalein Atoll In 1993, Kwajalein, one of the Marshall Islands, removed Saturday, August the 21st from its calendar, causing the IDL to be moved to the east. This brought Kwajalein into harmony with the other islands, which up to that point had been on a different day. Eastern Kiribati In 1995, Kiribati moved the IDL to the east for administrative convenience. Prior to this, the Republic of Kiribati was divided by the dateline. 4. Modern Jews admit a problem Within modern Judaism, there are four major opinions regarding where the dateline should be. 1. 
90 degrees east of Jerusalem, 2. 180 degrees east of Jerusalem, 3. Mid Pacific, closely resembling the international dateline, 4. There is no specific dateline, observe when the locals do. While no genuine truth seeker should be looking to the Ashkenazi Jews for anything, the fact that there is any debate at all among the self-styled rabbis is indicative of a larger problem. 5. The Patriarchs and Prophets So, how did the Patriarchs and Prophets manage time? Are we to believe that the antediluvian men of Yah and the post-flood Patriarchs and Prophets used a zigzagging imaginary dateline in the middle of what is now the Pacific Ocean to determine when the Sabbaths and feast days arrived? This is truly absurd. Again, the modern dateline was created in 1884 by mere men for the purpose of worldly commerce. 6. Noah's Descendants Think about this for a moment. When Noah's family began to grow and replenish the earth after the flood, some would have traveled east and some would have traveled west. Eventually, the two groups would have met each other on the other side of the world. Now, consider this. If Noah's descendants were observing a continuous weekly cycle, they would have been one calendar day apart when they met on the other side. For example, one group would be observing the sixth day, while the other group would be observing the seventh day. The reason for this is that those who travelled east were travelling towards the rising sun, beginning their days earlier with each eastward movement, while those who travelled west were travelling towards the setting sun, beginning their days later with each westward movement. Consequently, when the two groups met on the other side of the world, those who had been travelling east would be one day ahead of those who were travelling west. So, who would be right? Whose calendar would have been correct? The answer? If they had been observing a continuous weekly cycle, they would both be correct, which is not possible. This again demonstrates the fallacy of a continuous weekly cycle, and it validates the importance of having a dateline that is governed by the heavenly bodies. Here are some questions to ask yourself. If these ancient men and women of Yahweh were not using the modern counterfeit dateline to measure time, what were they using? And Elohim said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons or worship times, and for days and years. Genesis 1.14 They were using the lunisolar dateline, which is established each lunation by the lights in the firmament of heaven. If erring men had not abandoned heaven's calendar and neglected Yahweh's feast days, the counterfeit dateline would never have been necessary. The man-made IDL is the result of open rebellion against heaven. Challenge for all Saturday Sabbatarians, teachers and pastors included. How can you consistently observe a Saturday Sabbath without using the man-made international dateline? You cannot. It is irrefutably impossible to use the Roman Papal Gregorian calendar without also using the man-made dateline, for it is this very line that tells you when to transition from one day to the next. It is this very line that tells you which days to reckon as holy and which days to reckon as common. This, perhaps, makes no difference to the institutionalized Sunday-keeping churches that teach lawlessness but to those who are zealous for the things of Yahweh and who recognize the eternal value of his Sabbaths and feast days, this makes all the difference in the world. If we are to serve the Father without compromise, we must allow his word alone to distinguish for us that which is holy from that which is common. Which is to say, we must use heaven's calendar and heaven's dateline to determine when the Sabbaths and feast days arrive, not man's counterfeit dateline that's only been zigzagging its way through the Pacific Ocean for the last 130 years. Now, we have a challenge for you. Ask your own questions. If you are a Saturday Sabbatarian, ask your pastor, how can we consistently observe a Saturday Sabbath without using the 130-year-old man-made international dateline? If he is honest, he will have to concede that it is impossible.
The world simply cannot be united in observing a Gregorian day and or date without using the international dateline. The question that logically follows then is, how can Saturday be heaven's ordained seventh day Sabbath? There is simply no way around it. If the day matters, then the method used to calculate the day matters too. You cannot have it both ways. You cannot say that the seventh day Sabbath is of the utmost importance to our Father in heaven, while also saying it is acceptable to let worldly men determine when the seventh day Sabbath begins and ends via the international dateline. Embrace truth. Now that your eyes have been opened to the deceit of the modern calendar, what will you do? Will you obey at once and begin studying and observing heaven's calendar? Or will you obstinately plug your ears, cover your eyes and turn your back to the light? Will you pick up your cross and follow the Lamb wherever he goes? Or will you shrink from the invitation and return to the complacency and darkness from whence you were called? It is our prayer that you will shake off the spirit of Laodicea and flee Babylon while there is still time. Please do not make the mistake of believing that there is safety in numbers. Your pastor might choose to remain in darkness. Your church family might prefer the comfort of a pew over the discomfort of bearing the cross. Everyone you know might reject the latter rain and the increasing light of the Father's calendar. This, however, does not excuse you from your responsibility to embrace the truth. Yahweh has made it known to you. Incomprehensible blessings await those who trust and obey. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18. For more on this and other exciting end time topics, please visit worldslastchance.com.